favorite song about in this whole book is found on page 279. Does anybody know what that is? Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Is that the goal of everybody in this place? Oh, I want to see him. Seeing Jesus and look upon his face. Sing it with me. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads whatever be tied. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain high And behold my Savior there leading in the fight With the tender hand outstretched for the valley low Guiding me I can see as I onward go And oh I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep then my lord directs my bark he does safely keep and he leads me gently on through this world below he's a real friend to me and oh i love him so and oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice and oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice won't you give him loud praise tonight The one who saved me by his grace And he takes me by the hand Leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day That will be, sing that one more time, would you? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see When I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace 
embrace and he takes me by the hand leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day would you sing it one more time oh what a day When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, and he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. We sing a lot of songs that really don't make a lot of sense. I've heard people sing songs about I'm waiting in heaven with my feet in the water and sitting up here just waiting on you to come. And uh, I've heard all kinds of songs like that. But I tell you what my mom and my dad's doing right now, they ain't up there just waiting on me. They're up there singing holy, holy and crying. And, they're the presence of Jesus. Amen. They've been there a long time. They've still got 10,000 years to just be started. So I doubt they're waiting up there fishing or putting their feet in the water at the riverbank. I believe they're up there worshiping Jesus. I, I want to get beside them and uh, I want to get right beside them when I get there. And what a day that's going to be. I said, what a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated tonight. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, I feel the Lord here tonight. I was thinking about all the stuff with the intercoms and stuff. We we think that messes the Lord up. That don't mess the Lord up. His presence is here. That ain't going to run the presence of the Lord out. And uh, God is good to us. Ushers, please come tonight and receive uh, an offering tonight, a special offering. I appreciate the way that you supported this tent revival in every way. Every way. Some of you have not missed a night. Some of you haven't missed one night of service. Some of you... Uh, I tell you guys, hold on to the money is all I'm asking you to do. You let all that paper fly away, but hold on to the money. Amen. I do appreciate your giving. You've been so kind to give every night. and uh, uh, We've been able to bless every speaker and uh, every group. And so I, I know that you'll do the same tonight. And, uh, what I wish you'd do, there's people tonight all over this world that don't have a dime, don't have a lot of food to eat, don't have roofs over their head. But if you've got something to give tonight, you're so blessed. You're so blessed. Won't you raise that up in there and say, thank you, Lord, that I have this to give tonight. I have this to give tonight, and I'm so blessed. Father, I pray that you'd bless your people tonight. Bless every one of them. There may be somebody here tonight that is really lacking God and they don't have the finances to do what they want to do. But Father, I pray that you bless them. Would you bless those that have to give tonight richly? Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they can't even contain. And I love you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Can I try some we need practice? Yeah. Probably in C. Can I hear C? When do I think of how he came so far from glory? Came and dwelt among the lonely, such as I, to suffer shame and such disgrace. On that Calvary took my place, then I asked myself, this question, who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will but thy for? This answer I may never know Why he ever loved me so That to an old rugged cross He would go for who am I I'm reminded of his word Just be true, I'll give to you life forever and forever. What good have I done to deserve God's only Son to fight my battles until there was? For who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will but thy for? This answer I may never know. Ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he would go for who am I? Does anybody remember? I'll give it to Terry in just a moment. Does anybody remember? The night before last, that old boy staggered off the road, yeah. yes. came under the tent, smelled liquor on his breath, sat over at the bait during church. I had a guy to tell me today, I was talking to him this morning, and he said, I was telling him about that, and he said, you know, I, the church I go to, they'd have probably kicked him out. He had liquor on his breath. They'd have probably ask him to leave as soon as they smelt it. Who am I? Who am I that a king would die for? If it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be just like that old boy tonight. If it wasn't for God saving me and redeeming me, I'd, I'd be just like him. So uh, would you help me sing that tonight, just that, that chorus to that, Who am I? Because there may be somebody tonight thinks that you're not even worthy to be saved or you've done too much. But you're looking around at a lot of people tonight that's just, who am I? Who am I that he would do that for me? Aren't you glad he did it for you? Aren't you glad he saved you in the condition that you were in? Sing it with me one time.
this answer I may never know why he ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he would go for who am I before Terry comes tonight would you stand up and just thank him that he loved you enough, that you, you're the who am I, who am I, who am I that a king would bleed and die for. Amen. It is a true honor tonight. You, you can read, you can sit down, or I'm sure Terry asked you in a few minutes to, I mean, say, Bishop Terry, amen. I should, um, if he's like me, I don't even like that title much. I Just call me who I am. Amen. And all right, okay, Addie. I didn't mean to forget about Addie. Come here, Addie. <laughs> Addie asked me, could she sing a song tonight? So yeah. I never refused one of these young ladies or that they want to sing. And I told her to have her computer ready. And you got it ready? All right. Okay. Amen. Suffer the little children. Amen. It's an honor tonight to have Terry Bowden. I met Terry a couple of years ago. And I, I'm telling you, I just don't think there's a finer man in this world than Terry Bowden. Amen. His wife's with him tonight. His daughter's with him tonight. Grandson and girl, girlfriend. Is that great? And, and a cousin back here. All right. And uh, they came tonight. Um, Terry is a, uh, he's funny. Yeah. He's funny. If you could see this guy at the senior adult retreat, you don't know what I meant about funny. They uh, strapped a, is, that, is it not a pedometer? Is that what it is? That they measures your steps. They strapped pedometers to some of the old folks' heads, and they had to see who had the most movement in all of that time. Terry, I'm telling you, he was jumping on stages and off of stages, and he was just, he just uh, but he's just a delight. But more than that, I've never met a finer Christian. Yeah. You see, you have to be a Christian before you're a preacher. Right. And I've never met a finer Christian in all my life. There's some preachers that are not Christians. That's right. There's some men who stand behind the pulpit that are not Christians. Right. But I'm telling you, I really believe Terry Bowden is one of the finest Christian men that I've ever met. And I mean that. And this church loves him, don't you? Don't prospect love him. Amen. Out of the mouth of sucklings and babes, and we heard a little girl sing tonight, and we appreciate, of course, the little children. And really, again, thank you for uh, recognizing her and for your 
kind remarks that he has shared tonight concerning me. I deeply appreciate it. And uh, likewise, I want to say how much I appreciate Pastor Gann, his sweet wife, and her commitment to the ministry, to this church, and to the work of God. Not many tent revivals you hear about at this age, this day, but there's one here. And this is my second opportunity to preach in a tent. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity. I might just share something rather interesting. My grandfather was a pioneer preacher of the Church of God, and he started his ministry on the street corner and then ended up pitching a tent. And uh, Raymond Crowley, who was one of our general overseers, was on that little island when he pitched that tent and came into the church and uh, into the Church of God. And uh, his mother, as I recall, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and uh, he did. And uh, anyway, so something great about these tents. When people see a tent, it seems to be an attraction. They want to know what's going yeah, on right. under that tent. That's right. Well, I tell you, there's something great going on under this tent Amen. this week. Amen. And it's been the presence of God and That's the right. preaching of the gospel and people's hearts and lives being changed and blessed and touched every night. As Pastor again has said, we've had revival. Yeah. It wouldn't happen if the pastor had not scheduled it. And so I know you appreciate that. And I want to say thank you, along with him, to your commitment to this church for coming and being in the revival and supporting it because it's pretty difficult to make the thing really go if you can't get the support of the, the, lo the local church Amen. but you have been faithful to support and I want to tell you this God's got it on record everything you do for the cause of Jesus Christ he keeps good records go. and so he's recording tonight your faithfulness throughout this revival. Yes. Obviously, sometimes we can't make it. And God knows that too, because He's practical. So thank you for coming. And He's they mentioned, or, or my wife has uh, picked out, or let you know anyway, uh, those that are here tonight that I'm especially honored to have, and that would be a, well, my daughter, uh, Robin. Um, I, how many know my daughter, Robin? Okay, this is not good. Uh, you're going to get. You're going to meet her tonight. You talk about a saying as somebody that I love and appreciate. Of course, we all love our youngins, but she is a lover of God and His Word, and is on every day on Facebook uh, reading the Bible. She has the ministry. Read the Bible with me. It's called. You've heard me talk about it. I've even got one of the shirts with the words "Read the Bible with me." So if you want to get on there, read the Bible. You've never done it before. She's read it for years to her children when they were small as they were growing up. And she's continued to do it, even has written a book on Read the Bible with Me. Now, if you expect to get to heaven, you need to buy that book. And, she, and she's got that book. And uh, you can follow along, and you'll love it. I, I'm telling you, you will love that book. And I've had people come to me and said, I heard your daughter last night. And if you don't get it that particular day, you can get it the next night because of all this highfalutin stuff they have today. I can't figure all that out, but um, most of you, I guess, can. But anyway, so you can get yesterday's reading today. And it's good to have, as she said, my uh, my cousin Cheryl. Hold your hand up, Cheryl. God bless you. Uh, loves the Lord. A dear Christian lady. Her mom was a saint. And, and uh, allow me just to visit a bit. I, I know we are on a schedule, but uh, our family has been blessed. My grandparents, my grandfather and grandmother had 13 children, of which her mother was one. One of the godliest ladies that I have ever known was my Aunt Etta. And Cheryl is her daughter, and that torch has been passed down. The fire is in her soul. She loves God. And when she found out about the tent revival, she said, I'm coming. So I said, well, praise God for that. So it's a real delight to have her. And let me say finally, well, not finally, but also... My grandson is here tonight. His name is Zach. He's a mechanic. If you need a car put together, <laughs> taken apart, you need an oil change, you need a steering wheel, you need whatever it is, I'm telling you, he can do it. And he is, stand up, Zach. He's the, that's the ugly guy with the hat. And, uh, amen. and a beautiful girlfriend, Jaylee. We love Jaylee. We sure do. Finally, my wife. Thank you, sweetheart, for coming. She is my backbone. Why would a guy get emotional when he talk about his wife? <laughs> but she is, she's my all in all. And I thank God for her. She has been faithful. And by, by the way, I, I, thank you for indulging me, but 
I tell you what, when we get to heaven, some of the greatest rewards are going to be given not to pastors, but to their wives. <laughs> they've been their support, man. They have, they've stood behind them. And Have you got your Bible? Where's my Bible? Have you got your... I came to church one time. I left my sermon home. I turned around and go back again. She said, where's your sermon? Well, you know, so I guess it's a... I don't know. It's an old age thing. But anyway... <laughs> Thank God that for, for good wives. Well, that's that's enough visiting. But I want to say to this church again, thank you for being faithful, and I appreciate you so very much. I hope I don't preach too long, and if I do, you can just get up and, and, and go if you think it's too long. <laughs> Reminds me of the guy that was in church in the middle of the sermon. He got up and started walking out, and the pastor didn't like it that he interrupted by getting. He said, excuse me, where are you going? He said, I'm going to get a haircut. He said, you should have got that when you came before you came in. He said, I didn't need it when it came in. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that. I don't know about that. But. If you would, stand for the reading of God's word. But again, thank you again for this opportunity. I do appreciate it. And um, I'm so thankful for your ministry and what a preacher he is. Now, I don't have my glasses. And I, uh, I've got them in the car. But this little light of mine... I'm going to let it shine. I think I can get away with it. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. If you brought your Bibles, bring that with you. Thank you for the light. If you got it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say that's the way it goes. Look at this Michigan girl. Thank you so very much. You're from Michigan. You can't be all bad. We pastored in Saginaw, and her grandfather pastored in, uh, in Detroit. And she's here tonight. God bless you. We had a little chat together. All right. Thank you. This work. Praise God. You may wonder where they are after the service. 13. Verse 13. Chapter 16. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Jesus said and said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, or son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then he tells Peter about his ministry and his future, and I say to you, You are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's ask God to touch his word. Father, thank you for the privilege you've given me to preach this great gospel. I am not worthy, but I thank you, Lord, for whatever reason you chose to allow me to stand behind the sacred desk and proclaim the word of God. And now, Lord, I pray you'll breathe upon this church. Breathe upon your people, Lord. We are here to hear from you. Not a man, not anything but your word. And so may you speak to our hearts tonight. And should there be someone here tonight that has never accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord or her Lord and Savior, may this be the night when they ask Christ to come into the heart. Know that you will save them and deliver them from the power of death and the devil's hell and make heaven their home. May it be. Bless every heart and life. Every need supply. We ask in your mighty name and we'll give you the praise. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. So I'm speaking to you tonight on the subject, Who is Jesus? And I'd like to begin my message with a question, both a question and then a factual statement. My question is, Who is Jesus? My factual statement is, I know who Jesus is. And I base my factual statement on historical data, theological truths, and personal experience. We used to sing a song a few years a few years ago. Everybody want to know who Jesus is. According to our text, Jesus asked his disciples two thought-provoking questions. I'll take these off now. I just about forgot. You're fine. Two thought-provoking questions. The first question addressed. The first question addressed what others believed about Jesus. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Yeah. Am. The second question targeted the disciples personally. But who do you say that I am? Amen. There's never been a person who has inspired greater devotion, 
prompted greater respect and absolutely old age a few greater controversy than the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ everyone has an opinion of who Jesus is and those opinions range from one end of the spectrum to the other from the silly to the serious from the traditional to the heretical from the demon to the deity but I suggest to you tonight however it is imperative that we know who Jesus is for our yeah, eternal yeah, destiny yeah. hinges yeah. On. on the correct answer. Yeah. When his disciples responded to the first question, they were simply parroting what others had been saying. Some say you're John the Baptist. Uh -huh. Some say Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the Old Testament prophets. Evidently, some of these people looked upon, evidently these people looked upon him as an ascetic, like John the Baptist, or a visionary like Elijah, or a weeper like Jeremiah, or perhaps a thunderer like some of those Old Testament prophets had been. Whatever it was, it was evident that many serious people really did not know who Jesus was. That's right. And how sad it was because they did not realize what they did not know. For whatever need they might be facing, their answer was standing in their very midst. And can I tell you, he is in our midst tonight. Amen. He's been every night where two, three come together. You know the verse. I will be there. Amen. We may not see a figure. We may not uh, sense some kind of a, uh, a, a, that is a person that we can see. But we know, we feel, we, we absolutely are convinced that there is a presence beyond people tonight. That makes us feel warm and good as the gospel is preached and the songs are sung. That one is the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know he's alive and well? So I repeat again tonight, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? That 2,000 year old question is still being asked today as we step into the second decade of this new millennium. Not long ago, a prominent magazine article on the subject of Jesus stated... We see Jesus as many different people. That is a dutiful son, or an ascetic, or a sage, or a mystic. Depending on your own personal needs, we see Jesus in our own image. But I would suggest to you that in reality, these different concepts of Christ as an ascetic, or as a sage, or as a mystic, only contradict each other. Not only contradict each other, but they leave man still groping in despair and darkness, Again, the questions remain, who is Jesus? Amen. Albert Schweitzer wrote concerning Jesus, he was a deluded fanatic who futilely threw away his life in blind devotion to a mad dream. There's nothing more negative than a critical study of the life of Jesus Christ. George Bernard Shaw suggested that Jesus was, and I quote, he was a man who was sane until Peter hailed him as the Christ and who then became mono a monomaniac. His delusion is a very common delusion among the insane. Brigham Young of the Morgan religion concluded, and I quote, Jesus Christ was a polygamist. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, were his poor wife. Mary Magdalene was another. Also the, bridal at the bridal, also the bridal feast of Cain of Galilee, where Jesus turned water into wine, was the occasion of one of the two marriages, unquote. And we cringe at such ignorance and blasphemy. But such opinions of him have always existed even during his earthly pilgrimage 2,000 years ago. As an example, there were the Pharisees. And the best they ever said of him was that he was a teacher. He was a rabbi. We read in Matthew 9, 10, 11, And it happened that as he was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors... Tax gatherers and sinners came and were dining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher, as they called him, eat him with the tax collectors and the sinners? That was the most respectable title they ever used of Jesus, a teacher. They realized that he was an instructor and he had followers. He spent time discussing spiritual things. 
At best, they view him as teacher. But things degenerated quickly for the Pharisees. That same group of men later said he cast out devils by the ruler of the devils. In other words, he represents the enemy. His power is from the pit of hell itself. Then there was Jesus' former friends from his neighborhood where he was raised. The scene is chapter for us in Matthew 13. And it came about that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there and coming to his hometown, he began teaching them in their synagogue so that they became astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all here with us? Where did this man get all of the all all of these uh, of these credentials? And and uh, where then did this man uh, get all these things? Notice the Bible said, and they took offense of him. That's right. yes, the did. neighbors, in effect, were asking. Yes. Isn't this the kid my kids was raised with? Isn't he the one who years ago played hide and seek with them around the corner? Isn't this the same one who was growing up in, our, in his father's carpenter shop? Isn't this the one who repaired our cabinet? He's the same Jesus, isn't he? Where in the world did he get these miraculous powers? Why does everybody applaud and respect him? He's just one of us. And as if that wasn't bad enough, we read in verse 21 where his own family... His flesh and blood thought he had lost it. So in verse 21 we read, And when his own people heard of this, they went out to take custody of him, for they were saying he has lost his senses. They accused Jesus Christ of insanity. Yeah, then there was Herod the Tetrarch, the Roman governor, who was absolutely convinced that Jesus was John the Baptist, simply risen from the dead. Matthew 14, 1 and 2, At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus. And he said to his servant, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. John, you recall, had convicted Herod of his dastardly deed of taking his brother's wife. So John is the one whose head Herod required after watching Salome dance that sensuous dance. And when word reached him about Jesus, he thought, Oh no, the ghost of John has come to haunt me. This isn't Jesus, this man. This must be John the Baptizer raised from the dead. Almost like Edgar Allan Poe's moving short story, The Telltale Heart. The murderer thinks he hears the heartbeat of the man he's just murdered and buried in the basement. He hears the thump, thump, thump. And that pounding heart begins to haunt him. In actuality, it's his own heart that he hears. And that's what Herod was living with. This isn't the Messiah. This is John back from beyond. And I cannot escape him. And of course, there were many others. There was Caiaphas, the high priest. He stood before Caiaphas in one of the six kangaroo courts. He, all of them, of course, illegal. And Caiaphas, looking him in the eyes, pressed him for his identity. We read in Matthew 26 and 36, But Jesus kept silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether or not you are the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Then there was Pilate, yes, governor of Judea, caught in a catch-22 situation, nervously interrogating him. He asked, what have you done? And are you king of the Jews? Finally, in good Shakespearean fashion, and washing his hands of the whole ordeal, convinced of Jesus' innocence, but lacking the courage to stand by his own conviction. Right. He blurts out up to the angry mob, take him and do away with him as you please. I find no fault in him. Amen. Again, who is Jesus? We ask wise men, those ancient magi, who, again, they, in Matthew 2, answer our question with a question. Where is he who is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east. Amen. And we have come to worship him. There is no question in their minds who Jesus is. Amen. His birth represented the birth of a king, God's Messiah. That star was his star. And they had made their long journey that they might bow down to him in adoration Amen. and in humility yes. and in sincere worship. Yes. But now listen. We ask the one Jesus called Father in Matthew 3, 16 and 17. At the age of 30, 
He was baptized by John of the Jordan River. And coming up out of that water, a voice spoke through the clouds announcing his true identity. Matthew writes, and after being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming down upon him. And behold, a voice out of heaven spoke, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Praise God. There was no question in God's mind. In effect, he had said to them, I have just given this world my beloved Son. But let ourselves ask the man himself, Jesus. It's now after his crucifixion. Remember, Pilate had painted a sign above the cross of Jesus, which read, Jesus, the Nazarene King of the Jews. That's what Pilate wanted written down above the cross above Jesus' head. But the Jewish official said, hey, don't write that on, the, on that sign. We read in John 19, 21, and so the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am King yeah. of the Jews. They were saying to Pilate, when you put that on that sign, you are making a statement that is what he actually is. But we, but we want all who pass by to know that what he claimed to be. But now follow me. We go to Luke 24 and 44. Jesus has gone to death and beyond. He's come out of the grave. He has victoriously risen in bodily form, and he is speaking to his disciples uh, his disciples notice he goes back into the Old Testament and mentions words that were spoken about him. We read, now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law and in the prophets, Amen. Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, they must be fulfilled. We come to one of those rare occasions when Jesus took people through the scriptures and explained himself to them from the law and the Psalms and the prophets, he is saying to them as, as he uh, speaks to them and takes them through the scripture. Do you see this? You see that? That was in reference to me. Do you see this? That is spoken about me. Do you see that? That scripture is referring to who I am. See what the prophet said here? I fulfill this. We read in Matthew 24, beginning with verse 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it was written, that Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name for all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Then he said, you are witnesses of these things. He was saying to them, men, you have the unique privilege you have lived during transition. You have seen me carry these things out. Now I've come back from the grave and I am declaring to you this truth. I am who I claim to be. Yeah. You are witnessing God yeah. wrapped in flesh, walking before your very eyes. You are seeing a manifestation of the Son of God. He's walking around in human flesh. You have witnessed undiminished deity and true humanity. They've come together all in one. And you have yeah. been privileged to witness that and to see that. Eyes that would love to see what you have seen. You are a blessed group of people. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Here's yes. the way John put it. In chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. Of course, the capital W, referring to Christ. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Amen. Then he writes in yes. verse 14, the Word became flesh. And it made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only one who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. We ask, who was Jesus? Oh, no, he was not some mystic, some sage or mere man, or as many want to imply, some great moral teacher. Oh, no, no, he was God. He was walking in human flesh, and he came to this old world to bring divine redemption and healing and deliverance. Listen, and to give his life that you and I might have everlasting life. The only reason we sit under this tent tonight and can rejoice and have a hope that we have because we have found Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. We know who Jesus is. Thank God tonight. I know who Jesus is. Can you say praise God? I like the way C.S. Lewis puts it. He said, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying that I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him, which is I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. C.S. Lewis writes, that is the one thing we must not say. A man who was a mere man and said the sort of thing that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. Right. He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who said he's a poached egg, or he would be, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either the man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him. You can kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. Oh, but let us not come with some any patronizing nonsense about he being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us, and he did not intend to. Amen. Yes. And that's a powerful statement. Yes, it is. Who is Jesus? Yes. They just couldn't or they wouldn't grasp it. Though it screamed at them everywhere they turned. The healing, the deliverance, the cleansing of lepers, the raising of the dead. He said to them, for many good works here, have I shown you from the Father? For which of these do you stone me? The answer said, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Yeah. St. Paul had it right when he wrote, for without controversy great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. You and I serve the living Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, God himself. Can you say praise the Lord? God and man come together in human flesh. The Bible is full of examples where both his humanity and his deity is revealed. We read in Matthew 14, 22, and immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to them on the other side while he sent the multitude away. And after he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain. Notice, he went up to the mountain to pray. We see Jesus' humanity as he kneels before his Father in prayer. You will never read in Scripture where God prayed. Deity, need, deity has no needs. Prayer is an act of man. Humans pray. Prayer is an expression of need. It's a decoration of adoration. And God adores no one. There is no one higher to adore. He is self-contained. And all glory resides in him. But man prays because of a need to worship. He prays because of his need for strength. He prays because he needs guidance or assistance or whatever. In praying, he shows himself man. But in the next setting... We see the divinity of God revealed. We read, begin with verse 23, and when it was evening, he was alone. But the boat was already many stadia away from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Amen. he came to them walking Amen. on the sea. Amen. It seemed to the disciples this phantom came out of nowhere, walking toward them on the water. And seeing that figure coming to them on the water, as we might, the, the Bible said, they were terrified. Yeah. The Bible says they cried out, Phantom in the Greek, that is a ghost. Of course, bold Peter jumps to his feet and said, Lord, if that's you, yeah. then I'm going to try that too. And slumping, slump, stumbling out of the water, he can't pull it off. Later, a very significant conversation occurs in verse 32. And when they got into the boat, both of them, one wet and one dry. The wind stopped, and that in yeah. itself was a miracle. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are certainly God's son. Only man prays. Only God walks on water. And according to Matthew, Jesus Christ did both. Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand up of praise this evening? Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. Speak to us tonight. Then Mark's Gospel records another occasion where humanity and deity were seen together. In Mark 1 and 40, a leper came to him, beseeching him, and telling him, falling on his knees, did for him, saying, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Much of us, most of us rather, have never seen a leper before. We've, we've seen pictures of them. 
and they are incredibly tragic sights. No nose, half missing fingers, and so forth. In Jesus' day, the hands and the feet were often just bleeding stumps. No shoes of any kind could be worn. Some of them didn't have toes or even have feet. And I can just imagine this poor man with his bleeding stump saying to Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Amen. Now the Bible never speaks of leprosy being cured or healed. It always uses the word cleanse because leprosy in the Bible is a picture of sin. Amen. How many of you know tonight we are never cured or healed of sin, but we have been cleansed from sin by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Here's what the leper was saying. I know, I know there's something about you. You can really cleanse me. I know you can do it if you only will do it. As a man, Jesus is moved with compassion when he sees this fellow human being in desperate need. You see, man does that, and women do that. When we come upon a terrible accident, or we watch with horror of the tragic scenes of 9-11, or the, the, the hurricane in, and the devastation that takes place, we are moved with compassion. That's human mercy, expressed through human mercy. This is a classic example of you, Jesus, Jesus' humanity, but it doesn't stop with this humanity. We read in the next verse, and immediately... The leprosy left him and he was cleansed. I tell you, only God can do that. Amen. And suddenly toes began to appear. Fingers grew out and a brand new nose appeared on his face. And the terrible ache ended, ended, and the hemorrhage stopped. And God in man did his wonderful work again because he was God manifested in the flesh. Can you say praise God? Oh, give the Lord a hand up of praise. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for rocks. <laughs> then we come to another example from Dr. Luke, and it's another story that took place in the sea. In Luke chapter 8, 22, and I came about one of those days that he and his Disciples got into the boat and he said to them, let's go to the other side of the sea. And they launched out. But, but as they were sailing, he fell asleep. I, I've not done a, a whole lot of sailing. I've, I've done some of it. But they tell me on a calm day and with the rhythm of the sea, and I, especially, I, so, I suppose especially if one is tired, it's the most natural thing to do. Ship captains tell us easy going sailing and restful sleeping are meant for each other. I don't know about that, but one thing I do know that in Scripture, it's never said in the Bible that God sleeps. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It specifically, specifically says, He who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Man sleeps because he must sleep. And so here, as man weary from the day, according to Luke, he falls asleep in the boat. And that's when things begin to happen. Verse 23, a fierce gale wind descended upon the lake. And they began to be swamped into the and swamp and, and to be in danger. And they came to him and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. They were saying, Master, wake up, we're going to die. And really, that's rather amazing. They had already witnessed the feeding of the 5,000. Each one of them came back with a basket full left over, but they hadn't learned the lesson. Is still of his power. They had they had seen him walk on water. They had seen him cleanse the leper. But they had not connected with his deity. So here they are in the boat with God in the flesh. And they say, we're going to sink. They had learned that it's impossible to sink with God himself Amen. on the same Amen. boat. And suddenly with the word, everything is completely calm. Oh yes, only God can do that. Verse 24. And being aroused, he rebuked the wind and the surging wave. And they stopped and became calm. Mark's gospel said there was a great calm when my brother was in the Navy. Sailed around this world. He said there were times when the sea would become what they called a slick. A term that watermen use when the water is so smooth that it looks like silk. They say it's an eerie sight, especially... If the, if, especially in the ocean, if you flipped a coin, you could count the ripples. But never do slicks occur suddenly. But in this case, with the sea raging and the incredible velocity, uh, uh, instantly, 
with and with incredible velocity that was uh, that was raging in the sea. Instantly, it became a slick. Yeah. You could hear your own breath. It was so quiet and calm. And then notice the disciples' response. They were fearful and they were amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. Amen. Can't you imagine yeah. Peter yeah. saying, Wow, this man has got to be God. Oh yes, Peter, the one you woke up a while ago is indeed God. Can I just say to you this evening, in the tragic storms of our life, Jesus Christ specializes in common waves and, and yes, silencing God. winds and, and bringing peace out of chaos yes. and working miracles in one's life. God can do the impossible. It'll simply shock you on occasion sometimes when you cry out to God and He comes on the scene. Sometimes our faith is not like it ought to be and we are not proud of that. But even then, God will move sometimes and reveal a power in glory where you said that had got to be God hallelujah yes can you say praise the Lord how many know Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what he's done for others the songwriter said he'll do for you how can this man do this thing because he is God find that beautiful story of Lazarus he was a dear friend of Jesus who became ill and then died shortly thereafter Finally, Jesus arrives on the scene of death and as we remember meets with blame because he didn't drop everything and come earlier to be with the grieving family. The read in John eleven thirty two. 32, if you had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then we read when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit, the Bible says. Underscore the word deeply. Amen. And he was troubled under this underscore the word trouble again you'll never read of god being troubled not like this what we see again is his humanity is on display in verse 34 and 35 where have you laid him they said to him lord come and see notice the bible says a little simple verse that is filled with meaning and passion it says to where jesus wept he was broken he broke down and cried he was moved by what but you'll never read, you'll never read where God is weeping in heaven. Tears are a human trait. They're not divine. He wept as he grieved, not only because of their unbelief, but over the loss of his friend and the sorrow of his companion. It's a scene where any of us, had we been there in similar situation, we too would have cried. Verse 38, and, uh, and verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, being grieved, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Notice it was a cave. And now it was a cave. And a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. Amen. Martha, the sister of the disease, said, Lord, by this time there's going to be a stick, for he has been dead four days. He said to her, did I not say to you, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? And so they removed the stone. And I just love what that old country preacher said. He said, if he had limited the command for Lazarus to come forth, every corpse in the graveyard would have come out of those graves. It was as if he had said, Lazarus, just Lazarus this time, please, just Lazarus. But how many know the day is coming, my friend, when he's going to give a call and the dead in Christ are going to come out of the grave. And the Bible tells us it is going to happen. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the trumpet, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we shall all be changed. Praise God. I'm going to be changed. You're going to be changed. In the twinkling of an eye. That's the power of God that I'm talking about tonight. Oh, give him praise tonight. Thank you, Lord. So there we go. Now an incredible scene follows. We see a mummy staggering out of the tomb. Yes. Verse 44, he who, had been died, who had, he who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrapping. His face was wrapped around with the cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. And you talk about an electric moment. I'd love to have been able to have supper with Lazarus that night. I'd love to have been able to sit down and say, Lazarus, hey buddy, come here for just a few moments. 
I need to talk to you. I don't know if it's like you was in that tomb for four days. What was it like? What did you see? What took place? Don't we ask that question now? What's it like? Him? What are they doing now? I don't know what they're doing now, but we know something's been going. He was dead. He came back to life. You see, only man can weep and grieve, and Jesus did. But only God can raise the dead. And don't you know that's what Jesus did? Come forth, Lazarus. And he came out of that grave. Amen. A yes. living man right. shocked yes. the world. G. Campbell Morgan, when wrestling with the mystery of Christ's incarnation, once wrote, He was the God man, not God indwelling a man. Of such there have been many, but not a man deified. Of such right. there have been none, save in the midst of pagan systems of thought. But God and man combined in one personality, the two natures, a perpetual enigma, a mystery, baffling the possibility of explanation. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And I close with this final comment from the Gospel of John. Followed by a few testimonies, if I may. John 21. John wrote, this is the disciple who bears witness of these things. And wrote these things. And we know his witness is true. There are also many other things which Jesus did. Which if they were written in detail, I suppose even the world itself would not contain the books which were written. John was saying, I could have gathered up materials the world over and would not have had enough paper to write the stories that convince in irrefutable evidence that he is who he claimed to be, Amen. namely the very God come in human form to die, to be raised, that you and I might have everlasting life. Who is Jesus? I began this message by saying, I know who Jesus is. Amen. Based on this statement, based on this statement, I base this statement on three things. Historical data, theological truths, and personal experience. Amen. Right. Who is Jesus? We've heard many in the scriptures, the great miracles, the stories, the divine deliverance, the marvelous salvation. You name it, we hear it. We, we are in all over it. But that was 2,000 years ago. But what about tonight? Who is Jesus tonight? There is confusion in the world about who Jesus is tonight. There is many myths today and lies today and false props today as there was in Jesus' day. In fact, more so. But I'm going to tell you, friend, you better know who Jesus is. And you better ready to meet him. Because the Bible said one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess of things in heaven and things in earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. If you don't bow here, you'll bow there. Satan himself is going to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He tells us in Revelation 20 and 10. And he said, and, and, and I, I, I said, Dave, the, the, I'll be all right. Satan, the devil, was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a great throne, he said, from whose face heaven and earth fled away and there was found no more place for them. He said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And he said, the books were opened and another book, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books according to their and you better hear this preacher everyone whose name was not written in that book was cast into the lake of fire and will be tormented day and night forever and forever hear me tonight God wants nobody to go to hell he gave his son his son gave his life he's done everything he can that you and I might make heaven our home if we die and go to hell it'll be because we chose to go there we didn't elect to God we said no to God we said something other time to God. We said, not now, God. And my friend, you have no guarantee of tomorrow. The soul that sins, it shall die. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It is not God's will that any man should perish. God so loved the world. He gave his son that you may not perish, but have everlasting life. Who is Jesus? Does he still do what he did back then? 2,000 years ago. Do we have any real bona fide testimonies that he's the same God redeeming, delivering, Amen. healing, performing miracles? 
filling folk with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. I was going to ask the pianist to come to the piano, but that's me. <laughs> I think of men like Dr. Spellman, pastor of Penile Ministry, drug and rehab, Pennsylvania facility, running on, running in gangs and eat up with drugs, hooked on cocaine. He said, Brother Bowden, when God, God not only saved me, listen to me, he instantly delivered me from cocaine. Amen. You call Brother Spelman tonight. He knows who Jesus is. And if you ask him, I can assure you, he'll be quick to tell you, he's my Savior and he's my Deliverer. Amen. There sits in this service tonight, Brother Richard Shower, having also been delivered from drug addiction. I love his testimony. I love his story. I love, I love him. Heavy in addiction. He too knows who Jesus is. Brother Richard will tell you, he's my Savior, and he's my Deliverer, who is Jesus. I think of my wife, eat up, or rather with melanoma cancer, not knowing the outcome, and how we prayed for her in one of our evening services at a church of God youth camp in Maine many years ago, who fell out under the power of God. She sits here tonight in the front pew, a walking miracle Amen. testimony of the healing power of God. Who is Jesus? I think of my friend Ronnie Pye, one of the godliest men you'll ever meet. Pastor a little church up in Maine. Saved but not filled with the Holy Ghost. But he was desperate for God. And in one of revivals, fasted two nights for God to fill him. And was gloriously filled with the Holy Ghost. With the initial evidence of speaking in another tongue. He knows who Jesus is. His yeah. Savior and Holy Ghost baptizer. I think of Daisy right here in this church. A few weeks ago, where Pastor Gann felt led of the Lord to change direction and, and uh, shift gears, as it were, and say, I feel like God wants me to speak on the, on the importance of being filled with the Holy Ghost and the reason we need the Holy Ghost. And we gathered around Daisy. He said, Daisy is hungry for God, and she wants the Holy Ghost. And he called her forward, and we gathered around her. She raised her hand, gave praise to God, yielded her tongue, and started to speak in a heavenly language as the Spirit gave the utterance. She knows who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? He's my Savior, and He's my Holy Ghost baptizer. On and on we could go, but I suppose we could sum it up with just one simple statement. Who is this Jesus you preached about tonight? My friend, I submit to you, He is all you need. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Yeah. Would you stand, please? Yeah. Praise God, praise hallelujah. God, praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God. Praise God. I got sermon notes and classes and everything on it. If it's any more fun, I'm going to take my coat off and throw it out at you. I don't know what you need tonight, but God does. And can I tell you, He is all you need. Amen. He is a Savior, a healer, a Redeemer, a Deliverer, Holy Ghost Baptizer. He is all you need. And I'm going to ask you tonight. Matter of fact, I just feel led to do this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. We have no guarantee. We'll never meet this way again. Brother Brian was here last night. And I said, Brian, can you help me out? He said, no, for us to speak in on. He said, no, I've got a funeral. 28-year-old young man went out into eternity without God. Without God. We never know when your number's going to come up. James said, for what is your life? And they answered the question, I'll tell you, he said, it's like a vapor, it appears for a time, and then it vanishes yeah. away. Whereas you know not what's on tomorrow. Yeah. Can I ask you tonight, do you know Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Yes. It's important tonight, this may be your last opportunity. Yeah. If you have never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, nobody's looking. Hey, this is just us. This is a simple tent meeting. But if you said, Pastor, I've never asked Christ to come into my heart. Or if you say, I don't know if I'm a Christian or not, but I want to be. That's the most important question you can ever ask. Amen. Don't Amen. think about what other people think. It doesn't matter. 
Jesus Christ is knocking on your heart right now, saying, I love you. I've died for you. I've come to give you a message tonight. I've come to put my arms of love around you. I want to bring you into my kingdom. The only way I can do it is if you'll surrender your heart and life to me. If that's you tonight, you say, I'm not sure nobody's looking. Hey, slip your hand up and you put it right back down. Say, just pray for me. Please pray for me. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need Jesus tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wait just a second. We prayed every night for people. Maybe there's some here tonight that you need to touch from God. I, I don't know what it might be. I have no way of knowing, but God knows. If you need a healing in your body, I believe the healer is here. If you need deliverance, I believe the deliverer is here. I believe the same Jesus I preach tonight in this Bible is alive and well. I am the Lord, I change not. A very present help in time of trouble. While the music is going, if you want prayer, I'll take a few seconds. I invite you to come. We'll anoint you with oil. We'll pray for you. Amen. We believe God will touch you. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you if you'd like to come. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many are glad you came to church tonight? Can you give God a hand cup of praise? Praise the Lord. Amen. Do again. God bless you. I love you, brother. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Come on, Terry. There's some needs of prayer tonight. She's praying for her mom and dad to get saved. Amen. And know Jesus. Amen. And her brother to be healed. And this little boy here, every ch time he comes to church, as rambunctious as he is. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy says every time he says pray for my daddy pray for my daddy and my grandfather wow come here sister come here Addie I want brother Terry to pray for you tonight and I believe there's others that need prayer tonight I believe I believe there's others father in heaven would you stretch this way. Won't you come on up here with her tonight? Somebody come on up here with her tonight. And let's pray. Just come on up here with her tonight. Let's pray that God would save her daddy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Save. Save. Timmy is going to be cold. Lord, don't let him go to hell. Lord, it's their Lord, choice, but God, do everything, everything they can. Sweet. Bring a new conviction. Call out to you. Ask forgiveness. Make him miserable. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Save his soul, we pray. In the name of Jesus. We're asking in the name of Christ. You would deliver him. In the name of Jesus. Come to the cross and surrender all. In the name of Jesus. Heal Jacob in that moment. God, I praise you for it. Powerful name of Jesus. Father, we pray for you. As he asked tonight. God, I pray for Johnny tonight. That you'd save Johnny Brown. You would save his daddy, God. Lord, even at his age, he has a burden. God, I pray for his daddy tonight. And I pray for his grandfather to be saved. For James to be saved tonight, God. Keep touching his heart. Touch Edward's heart, God. In the name of Jesus. And we love you for it and we praise you for it. In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Ricky, I want to pray for you tonight. Come up here. Let us pray for you. They found out today the reasoning of he got his test results back today. Let, let Ricky through there, will you? Will you let Ricky through? Ricky found out today that he's got two blockages. 
one the main artery going into his that feeds his stomach and another artery that's completely blocked in his in his abdomen he has to go tomorrow to get his heart checked he's been having heart problems and, and difficulties i tell you Ricky the Lord loves you Amen. he gave you opportunity to be here tonight could have been gone a long time ago the enemy's tried to take you out so much but look at you you're standing here tonight and I thank God for his mercy and his grace and his goodness would you reach your hands toward Ricky tonight let's pray God I pray for Ricky Wants us to pray for her family tonight that lost children, that lost children. It's two youngest daughters on drugs. God, please. <coughs> yes. Father in heaven, we agree together tonight with her. For her family, for her children. We bind the very powers of hell. We rebuke him in Jesus' name. We ask you to touch her and her family, her children. Deliver them from the bondage that they're in. The addictions, God. We pray against those addictions. Yes, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, give her hope, God, that her children are going to be saved. God, I give you praise and I give you glory. Yes, we do. I give you honor. I give you honor. Does anybody else tonight need prayer? The doctors called me this afternoon and want me to come in tomorrow. They found something in my test yesterday couple of days ago that they want to talk with me about and uh, would you just stretch your hands toward me tonight and say father let the pastor get a good report 
Let it be the report of the Lord. And God, I love you and I praise you. And I love you for you. Lord, I claim healing in the name of Jesus. And I love you and I praise you. Lord, I'm serving you. Give it his We come against Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I love you and I praise you. In the powerful name of Jesus. Make him whole, we the pray. Name we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. How many knows this old song? I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than just a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Are you glad you know who Jesus is tonight? Do you know him personally? Amen. Amen. He lives in your heart, doesn't he? Uh, good song. I heard a song one time said he's not so far away when he's living in your heart. You ever felt like he was a long way away? Well, he's not so far away when he's living in your heart. Right. Aren't you glad he lives in your life tonight? Yeah. Amen. 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 And you sit together with him yes. yeah. in heavenly places. Amen. My goodness. Amen. Won't you shout out loud tonight if you're glad you came to the tent tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. People need to hear somebody loud other than a football game every once in a while. Amen. I wonder how, I wonder how loud Neyland Stadium will be Saturday if Tennessee beats Alabama Saturday. You'll hear them all over Knoxville. It, it, uh, we'll re-rebuke you and ask you to remove from the tent tonight. And, uh, we ask you to leave the tent right now. And, uh, but it, it'll be all over Knoxville. Let's let this community know we love Jesus. Will you do that one more time? Will you praise him? Right now? Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. Does anybody need anything tonight? Won't you give this uh, man of God a thank you tonight for such a word. Amen. 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 God bless you. Tomorrow night, Brother Pittman will be here, and uh, I think his family's coming to sing. Man, they're 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 anointed, and his daughter will be here singing with him tomorrow night. So please invite somebody to come with you. Get it? Find just find you somebody lost and bring them tomorrow night. Just bring people to the house of God, and you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen.